Hi, I'm Vince Gaffney. I'm an archaeologist from the University of Birmingham. Uh, I think I've got one of the best careers you could possibly have. We, archaeology is fundamentally a two cultures discipline. It, it brings in everything. It goes all the way from the study of pottery and art, all the way through the hard science, absolute dating, paleo-environmental studies, um, spatial statistics, computational uh, analysis, it, it, it just about covers everything and it means that you have uh, a real concept of how to study um, man and his works. Uh, I've been fortunate in, 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 in doing this work now for oh gosh more than 20 years and it's taken me into areas that I could never possibly have imagined that I've been, been able to study in both in Africa, Europe, America, and the, the breadth of societies that I've been able to look at. Hunter-gatherers, um, complex societies, Rome, Rome and her empire, the Greeks. Uh, I don't think that you could find a discipline that does quite so much. How did I become an archaeologist? Well, you probably might guess from my accent that I'm a Geordie. Well, I'm from the city of Newcastle upon Tyne, or as it was called, Ponsilius, the Roman settlement which um, stood on, 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 uh, on the site set 2,000 years ago. And when I went to school in the morning, I walked along Hadrian's Wall. When I got to school, um, I was actually studying above a Roman fort. It was possibly inevitable that I was going to be, to be interested in history and ultimately archaeology. Um, it, was, it surrounded me from my very earliest um, memories and, and, and I've always loved it. Um, when people ask me you know, what, what is, 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 is you know, the best thing about my job. It, it really is being able to travel, to study other societies and cultures, um, and you know, cultures both past and present in that, in that sense, because archaeology isn't just about the past. It's about human action and human remains, and that's just as much a contemporary um, um, study as a, as a, stu a study of uh, as a historical study. Um, uh, archaeology has so much to give contemporary society. On the one hand, you we, we you can see archaeologists working in forensics, uh, looking at conflict studies, and trying to understand, you know, why. The biggest questions about you know why is mankind so prone to violence with it you know past and and present um, and also how how societies fit together and that's that that is a contemporary issue we we've seen probably over the, the you know the past century or uh, at least the growth of vast urban areas and uh, you know we've got melting pots of of, um, uh, of populations within great cities, but it's not the first time it's happened. Um, we've had city formation for literally th for many thousands of years, and how people came together within the, those those areas and actually um, learned to live or sometimes not to live within them is 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 a valid and 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 useful study uh, for society today. So we we, we have much to offer, I think. I have been asked, you know, if I was able to go back in time, um, you know, who would, who, who would like to meet? Well, of course, being an archaeologist, I've got a lot of time to play with, I suppose. But um, if I did have the chance, I would probably like to meet General Pitt Rivers. He was the father of scientific archaeology. He was in, this, in, in the 19th century one of the great landowners within Britain and he used his, his wealth to, to underpin his archaeological work and he, he was an ex-military man and he, and he used his experience within the military to, to, to create a formal approach to archaeological excavation. Um, he, he surveyed the sites, he planned them meticulously he even had large models of each site um, built.
built uh, or created by the um, estate carpenter. Um, fascinating man to, to, to have met. Uh, you, mind you, you can look at his, um, at his portrait and, and rather guess that he wasn't an easy man to know. <laughs> but um, he, he, he founded my discipline in many ways and to have, to have met him and to have known what he actually thought and, and why he did uh, some of the things he did um, it would, would, would be fascinating. My first actual um, experience with archaeology was as a schoolboy. I was very lucky at the age of 14. Uh, my school had an opportunity to send us to do an excavation at Vindolanda, one of the Roman forts behind the Hadrian's Wall in, in, in Northumberland. And um, I was particularly um, lucky in, in having the opportunity to work in an area where they were producing the writing tablets from Vindlander. These are, these are quite famous and if you go to Vindlander today, there's a new museum actually, showing the, um, the, 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 the product of, uh, of, of these, this vast store of, um, of, of, of texts that were dumped when they, into a, into a, a midden when the, when the fort was abandoned. And it's fascinating because it really gives you an insight as to what it was like to be a Roman on the very boundaries of empire, to, to see people writing home for clothes, um, to asking people to come to dinner um, if they're at the camp. And that, I admit, was the, um, was the, was the commanding officer's wife, but non nonetheless, these are insights that, that um, we, couldn't, we couldn't get in any other way. It's textual um, evidence, but it was provided by archaeology. People ask me what's the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. Well, it's, yeah, I've worked in quite a few strange places and quite a few strange times as well. Um, I've worked in a few areas where there's been active conflict and I can absolutely assure you that the, the, the the, one of the most interesting positions that, or events that ever happened to me was to be at a party um, in a hill village in a country in Europe and for someone to pull out a Russian hand grenade and to pull the pin out. Um, that's, a period, that's an event that makes you think about your position in the world and actually preserving it. I actually jumped behind a wall and the person threw it into the next field. Um, he didn't go to have a look at it exploding, I'm glad to say. He dived behind the wall as well. However, I still have the pain, uh, just to remind me of that event. And, um, you know, I'm never going to forget that. What else would I like as an archaeologist? What, what discovery, what, 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 what new knowledge could I, could, could I imagine um, that that um, that we, we we might anticipate would be useful to us in the future. Well, there's there's many things that we could consider. Um, many of them wishful, you know, the the ultimate remote sensing device to see everything under the soil. Well, I'm not sure that's going to come in the near future. However, the future development of DNA studies. Now. That is an area of interest. Up till now, DNA studies have been very expensive. They've largely been um, linked to understanding the, 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 the development of, of humans themselves. Well, now that DNA is almost becoming a mass industry, we're getting to the point that we should be able to use archaeological sediments to characterize entire landscapes. And we're on the verge of that. This is something that isn't quite there yet, but it is very, very close to being reality. And when we can do that, perhaps we can be able to recreate landscapes in their entirety, not just the bits that we have at the moment, the people, the plants, the animals, the microorganisms as well. When we do that, we'll have a much better picture of what the past was really like.